Welcome. So what I want to do is I want to show you how to graph f of x equals sine of x over 3. And the most important thing that we want to do is we kind of remember uh, what our parent, or what the kind of standard form for our trigonometric graph was. So a standard form, we had a times sine of bx minus c plus d. And remember your a, b, c, and d, those are all going to affect your graph. So if we don't have one of them, their, their alteration is not going to happen. So the main important thing is, remember, we always want to kind of determine, the first thing I always like to do is determine your amplitude and your period. That's going to be the most important points. Because remember, the amplitude is going to be your half distance from your maximum and your minimum. And your period is going to be how long it takes for your graph to complete one cycle. So the amplitude, remember, was the absolute value of a, which in this case, we have um, a 1 multiplied by my value. So it's absolute value of 1 which is just equal to 1. That means my graph is going to go up 1 and down 1, depending if there's no uh, vertical translations, which we don't have a vertical transformation. So therefore, now I look at my period. And when looking at the period, remember the period takes uh, 2 pi divided by b. So in this case, remember, b is going to be your coefficient of your variable. So here you might say, well, I'm not seeing a variable. I'm not seeing anything in front of the x. But remember, we can always represent um, a 1 in front of your variable, and that 1 is being divided by 3. So therefore, I actually have 2 pi is being divided by my b is actually 1 third. It's the same kind of thing we write, like if I said 1 third, uh, 1 -third x is the same thing as x over 3. Those are equivalent. So you've got to be careful. When you have x over 3, remember we can rewrite that as, as 1 third x. So now, to simplify this, I multiply by the reciprocal on the top and the bottom. And any number multiplied by reciprocal multiplies to 1. And therefore, I end up with 6 pi. Now, the next thing I want to do is, once I know what my period is, I always want to find my critical points. So to find the critical points, and remember the critical points were going to be your, your maximum, your min, your x-intercepts. So the critical points, what you want to do is you want to take your period and now divide it by 4, which ends up giving us 3 pi over 2. So therefore, every interval of critical points is going to be a distance between each other of 3 pi over 2. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to find the, the start and the end of my graph if there's any kind of phase shift. So what we do is we always take what's inside our function and set it equal to 0 and set it equal to 2 pi. So the start of how I'm going to graph is going to be x divided by 3 equals 0. And the end of where my graph is going to be is going to be x over 3 equals 2 pi. So by solving for x, I get x equals 0. And then solving at the end, we're going to have x equals 6 pi. And this makes sense because our, if we're going to go from start from the end, it's going to take us 6 pi to complete one cycle, as we already know. But the important reason why doing this is because whenever we have a phase shift, that means it's going to be shifting left or right, this is going to become a very, very, very important part of graphing. However, since we don't have a phase shift um, or a vertical translation, it's, it's not as, as important right now. We can actually get away with it just by graphing the amplitude and the period. So I don't know why I grew that vertical line there. So let's go ahead and graph and see what's going to happen. Now, when graphing, usually we like to always kind of write in our, actually, yeah, so usually we always like to kind of write in what our parent function is going to look like. Now, a lot of times, rather than graphing always what the parent function is, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of set it into our parent graph. So we know that our critical points, we're going to have four of them, right? So we're going to have one, two, three, Four. Now, the start, we say, is going to be at 0, 0, and it's going to end at 6 pi. So then we look at if the distance for every critical point is 3 pi over 2. That means my first point is 3 pi over 2. Well, 3 pi over 2 plus 3 pi over 2 gives me 3 pi. And then 3 pi over 2 plus um, 3 pi over 2 is going to give me 9 pi over 2. So therefore, you can kind of see how each critical point is going to be separated. Now, we can also do this in the negative direction.
and therefore negative 6 pi. So to graph this, if we remember, the sine function always immediately goes up unless there's a reflection. And we look at our amplitude. Our amplitude tells me there's going to be a maximum and a minimum at 1 and negative 1. So if we kind of remember what our parent function looks like for the sine graph, what we can do is we know that our first critical point is going to be our maximum. Then we have an intercept, a uh, minimum point, and then another intercept. So our graph is going to go up, go down, and then come back up. And then in the negative direction, we immediately go down to our minimum value, cross, head up to our maximum, and then head back down. And the way that I know what the graph like this is I'm going off of, our, uh, off of the parent graph that we've studied in the previous videos. So, and just remember, I'm just going to graph two full periods. That's usually the way we like to go with it. But you can continue going two full periods in the positive direction or two full periods in the negative direction. But that's how you graph f of x equals sine of x divided by 3. Thanks.